thing you need to look at is whether or not you have enough string. So you are going to need several feet of the yarn to finish it off. So if you only have a little bit left, I would consider starting a new piece of string before you get too far towards the end. The next thing you need to do is you need to cut the end at a slope. We did that when we added new pieces of coiling cord. We also did that at the beginning when we started. However, this time we need much more of a gradual slope. So I have it cut here, but we want it to be pretty pointed so that it's not super obvious where the end of that coil stops. So if I had it just like that, it's a pretty big dip to go down there. So I need to cut that a little bit more so it's a little more pointy on the end. When you do this, you have to be really careful that you don't cut your finger and just take your time. Okay, the goal is for the end to kind of lay flat. Okay, it gets a little funky looking at the end, but that's okay. Okay, so my next step is I'm going to just continue on how I was doing it before until I get to about an inch left. So since I needed a new string, I'm gonna go ahead and add that. And I'm going to continue how I was doing it before again until I have about an inch left. Okay, so now I've got about an inch left on here. I need to just continue on, but instead of wrapping it around and then connecting it to the basket every few stitches, I'm just gonna continue to connect it the rest of the way. So I'm just gonna go about how I was doing it before. I'm gonna go in, pull it back, and go in and pull it back. Like I said, I'm just gonna continue to connect it to the basket for every single stitch. Um, see, I've got a little, couple little white pieces here. I can spread the string to cover those up, or again, I can go back through on top of them for a second here. Okay, it looks like I'm pretty much that done. Again, if you have a couple little white pieces that you can see, you can definitely go back and get those covered up. It's really important that this area is secure. Okay, so once you have that done, we are just going to, we need to figure out what to do with this string. So we're just going to weave back into the basket. Um, hopefully you have 
at least I would say about six inches left on the string. If you have more than that, that's even better. Okay, so my string's coming in on the inside here. So instead of continuing to do what I was doing, instead of going around the top, I'm going to start weaving into the bottom. So I'm gonna go down a row in there, pull that, and then where it's coming through right here, I'm gonna go down another row and pull through the inside. Then again, from the inside, I'm gonna go down another row. Ideally, we want you to get through all the way down to the bottom. But if you get down, let's see, about eight rows or so, that's good. Okay, I like to also come up a row or two just because I'm a little extra paranoid about it unraveling. Um, at this point though, it really shouldn't. In order for it to unravel, it would have to unravel all the way through there and then all of those would have to come apart. Um, if it ever did unravel, it'd be pretty easy to fix it since we do have that long string in there. Okay, so again, being extra paranoid, I'm gonna come up a couple rows too, but you do not have to. Um, the last step, is we're going to be tying this into a knot in one of our stitches that we have in there. It might be a little easier to tie that if it's closer to the top, especially if you have a narrow basket like mine. Okay, so once I get up to where I want to tie my knot, I'm gonna find one of these strings where we hooked the coil, where we um, attached it, and I'm just gonna go under that string on the inside since my basket is so narrow, could be easier to do it without the needle. If you have a wider basket, it's up to you. So I'm gonna go under there, and then I'm gonna come back onto the other side and go under there a second time from the same direction. And that created a nice little loop right here. So then all I'm going to do is now I'm gonna go through the loop and pull to tighten that, and that will create a knot. Okay, I'm gonna do one more. One should be sufficient, but again, just to be safe. Okay, this time I'm only gonna go through it once, and it already created that loop there. Be careful that the tail of your yarn isn't getting stuck in there. Okay, and then I'm gonna go through that loop, pull it tight, that should be it. So I'm gonna cut that off. The end process, the bowl gets a little funky, so you kinda of have to reshape it. Help it, pick up any scraps, and it's done.